Placing a transvenous pacer is pretty much exactly like putting in a big central line in the right IJ, with the only difference being that we're putting in a single lumen, big old cordis line in the right IJ instead of, say, a triple lumen that you may more typically use. And then through that single lumen, we're gonna put in a pacing wire that's gonna go all the way down to the right ventricle where it's gonna pace the heart. So you got this. You can totally do this. Now we wanna use either the right IJ or the left subclavian as the preferred sites because they're the closest to get to the heart, but also check this out. That curvature of the wire, we're gonna use that to our advantage. So if you go through the right IJ, it's gonna to curve towards the heart. And if you're coming across the left subclavian, again, it's curving towards the heart. If you can, use the right IJ instead of the left subclavian so we can use that for the permanent pacemaker. Now the only hard part about this procedure is remembering what gets connected to what, what are the settings that you're gonna put on the pacer generator, and the pattern on the cardiac monitor that we're gonna look for to know that we are in the right ventricle for sure. But don't worry, we got your back on all those things. So let's start by looking at a quick schematic overview of what those connections should look like when you're all set up. From the right ventricle, the pacing wire comes out the SVC and through the right IJ where you placed it. You have a sterile sleeve over the top of the sterile pacing wire. This syringe inflates and deflates the balloon. And then through adapter pins, it plugs into the connecting cable, which goes into the pacing generator. So once you consent your patient, and we already had an informed discussion, you're gonna sterilely prep and drape your patient, and then you're gonna put in that right IJ line. I'm just gonna assume y'all know how to do that part, so let's jump ahead. Once you got your cordis in the IJ, now you can remove the wire and the dilator. You can do this all in one motion. Plug the connecting cable into the pacing generator. This is typically sterile, this is not. So you wanna have a non-sterile assistant help you with this. Ours can actually be atrial or ventricularly paced, but we're putting this in the RV, so I'm gonna plug this into the V. Now that the connecting cable is all set up, we're gonna check the balloon on our pacing wire and make sure that works. So you're gonna use this small syringe and the one with the plunger. I mean, this can't draw up any more air than what it allows, and that's a good thing because you don't want it to rupture the balloon. So we're just gonna confirm that our balloon actually does inflate. And then you're gonna deflate the balloon, keep the stopcock open, and now we're gonna use our sterile sleeve. So the sterile sleeve direction really matters. This side is gonna to connect to the cordis, which means that the wire has to feed through it this way. So we're going to feed the wire through the sterile sleeve. And now we're ready to put this wire in. Now, if you have an ultrasound machine and skilled sonographer, now is a great time to recruit some help and get a sub xiphoid view. That way you can watch this wire going into the RV. And remember, we're following the curvature of the wire here, so it curves into the right ventricle. Wait, what if I don't have ultrasound? No big deal, it's all good. You can do this by watching the cardiac monitor and looking for an injury pattern, which we're gonna show you in just a second. So for now, you're gonna continue inserting this wire until you get to the 20 centimeter mark, which is indicated by the two black lines on the wire. Now you know that the tip of your wire and therefore the balloon are just outside the cordis sheath. That's a good thing. We don't wanna pop that balloon. Now we can connect the adapter pins to our pacing wire. And these are gonna get plugged in to our connecting wire over here and negative goes to negative, positive goes to positive. Remember, this is not sterile, so you wanna have an assistant help you with this portion. We're gonna set this up, have them turn on the pacing generator, and the rate on this one is set to 80. It's okay if you go slower than that, since their intrinsic rate is gonna be much slower than that. We don't have to pace the atrium, we just have to pace the ventricle. So this one has options for both, but we're just pacing the ventricle. And I have the output set at five milliamps. You can adjust that if you want. You could go a bit higher if you wanna turn it up. You can also change the sensitivity. The sensitivity here is set at three, but if you are troubleshooting and it's picking up some sort of intrinsic rate, then you can turn that sensitivity down to zero. We're just gonna leave it at three for now. 
Now we're gonna insert the wire a little bit further so that we can float the balloon in. So we're gonna push that wire down to the 30 centimeter mark, which of course is indicated by the three black lines on the pacing wire. Now it's at 30 centimeters, and I'm gonna go ahead and inflate that balloon. And now, probably another five centimeters or so, and as I do this, I'm looking at the cardiac monitor and I'm looking for that injury pattern that looks like a STEMI and lead V1. That's it right there. And you could confirm this on ultrasound if you have it. If the wire's being pesky and just coiling up in the RA, you're gonna wanna back it out, rotate the wire, and re-advance it to try to direct it into the RV. And then once you've got it, remember to confirm mechanical capture with palpation of the pulse, or you can do it with pulse ox. So I like the positioning of where this is, and now we're gonna adjust the pacing generator just to turn down that output until we barely lose capture and then turn it back up again. Okay, so I like the position. I'm getting good capture. I have confirmation on my cardiac monitor. So I'm going to deflate the balloon and then lock this stopcock in place. And we're gonna pull that sterile sleeve all the way down to the cordis and it connects here. Now you can open up the sterile sleeve. And this actually locks when you twist this piece, it locks it in place on the pacing wire. So this is really it. You're pretty much done at this point. You're just gonna secure it in place with some sutures and a sterile dressing and uh, you should probably call a cardiologist. I'm Dr. Jess Mason, and this is MRAP HD.